Good day everyone, Clocker reporting, and today we celebrate a very special milestone. 20 years of Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot is one of my all-time favourite gaming franchises, stretching all the way back into my childhood in the original PlayStation days. It holds a lot of nostalgia for me as a gamer, and many of the games still hold up as my all-time favourites. In fact, I said that four of the games can easily compete within my list of top 15 favourite video games ever made, and that's a high benchmark to reach for one series! Over the years, Crash Bandicoot has undergone such a story, from its original PlayStation and Naughty Dog roots, to the slightly ruffler Traveler's Tales period, to the somewhat recent and highly toxic Radical Entertainment era, and more recently, the upcoming and controversial Skylands Imaginators guest appearance. But I'm not one of THOSE fans! I'm a true blue Crash Bandicoot fan. I've stuck with the series through thick and thin and still support it even now. And to mark this wonderful milestone of 20 years, I'm commemorating it with a look at my top 7 favourite Crash Bandicoot games. Pretty straightforward, really. There's no real criteria in what I like in a Crash Bandicoot game, as I usually just take them as they come. But the one thing all these games have in common is that they are my personal favourites in the franchise, and that's really it. It could come down to anything really, and not specifically gameplay preference. Henceforth, there are no rules to follow, except that I will be accounting for the games I have played only. It's not a good idea to judge a game you haven't played yet. Henceforth, the GBA titles will be excluded, and even though I HAVE played it once, so will Wrath of Cortex. Memories are sketchy and not recent, so I can't trust them. That's everything! Are we all ready? Then let's start! If there is a genre of gaming I love, it is definitely racing. Of any discretion, really! Simulations and kart races alike are among some of my all-time favourite games, and make up the majority of my master list for favourite video games of all time. That's the one major benefit our first game has over the other games that will not feature on this list. Crash Nitro Kart! Crash Nitro Kart is a good game for what it's worth and has a lot of great things going for it, including the anti-gravity feature that wasn't introduced first in Mario Kart 8, and some really great level designs. There are also the unique boss races against Emperor Vila champions. Kronk, Nash, Norm, and Geary, all of whom are actually really well designed for kart racing bosses. Same can't be said for Vila though, HE'S JUST REALLY FAST AND UNFAIR! And finally, there is the ability to create your own battle arenas. Sort of. It ain't the part creator feature from the Tony Hawk Pro Skater games is basically what I'm saying. But all in all, the game mostly plays it safe by doing a lot of things that another game that will feature later on, Crash Team Racing, did and did well. It has the variety of tracks, the variety of characters, the challenge variety, basically everything that I'm going to praise CTR for. So you'd think that this game would be better. Right? Well, technically, yes. And no. It's a good and fun game, but when compared to CTR, it falls short. And for one simple reason. It just isn't Crash Team Racing. This isn't an argument of copy-paste, because that is untrue. The concepts are the same, but the execution between the two games is completely different. The problem I'm referring to is how everything feels by comparison. Quite literally. I'll go into more detail about this later, but one thing CTR did that was great was how everything had a good, hard, THUMP feel to it. CNK instead feels slippery and weak by comparison. It doesn't have the same impact sensation is what I'm saying. Imagine punching a brick wall, then punching a pillow. It doesn't leave the same sensation reverberating up your arm, does it? The character selection is also kind of eh. It does include the same main characters of CTR, but it lacks in everyone else. The new characters just don't substitute for Crash Team Racing's boss characters. ESPECIALLY TEAM OXIDE! Also, while the tracks are certainly creative and interesting, as I said before, they aren't really my favourites in the series by a COUNTRY MILE! They do have nice gimmicks about them, and I really like how some of them have been designed, but from a gameplay standpoint, they're just dull. I do admire the new additions of the multiplier crates which give you three of a weapon, and the special activation crates which trigger all sorts of events, including traps and ramps, but they don't make up for how somewhat fun the tracks themselves are. And finally, I find the soundtrack BORING! No, scratch that, I find it FORGETTABLE! I can only easily remember the main theme to the game, which is actually really catchy and nice, but every other theme in the game is just unmemorable, even so much as unnoticeable. But in saying all of that, Crash Nitro Kart is far from being a bad game. However, if I were to play a Crash Bandicoot Kart Racer, I'd go for either of the alternatives over this any day. It's still a fun game though, and I do have a soft spot for it as a racing game, 
so I don't feel anything wrong with putting it on the list. Also glad to note that the game was developed by Vicarious Visions, the same guys who not only made Skyliner Superchargers, but are currently making the Crash Bandicoot remasters. I'm saying it now, I'm super pumped and super hyped! I'm about to get roasted by a good chunk of the Crash Bandicoot fanbase, aren't I? Well, it was inevitable anyway. Yes, Crash Bandicoot 2 Quarter Strikes Back only just makes it onto the list. Why is that? Didn't I say in the beginning that I grew up with the series on the PlayStation? Shouldn't I love this game like a son like every other Crash Bandicoot fan? Don't worry, I'll explain in a minute why. But first of all, what do I like about this game? Well, what's there not to like about this game? It's one of the most visually appealing games on the console, with a soundtrack that is not only argued as the best soundtrack for the system, but is also considered to be one of the best in the series. There's also the matter of it being one of the best video game sequels ever, a fact that is undeniably true. When you consider how bad the original Crash Bandicoot has aged, and then look at this game which has aged wonderfully, it's no surprise. The game completely revamps on the original game's simple mechanics and makes the platforming feel so much more natural and fluent, not to mention control better and feel less slippery. Now you can do more than just spin and jump, now you can slide, crawl, body slam, hang from gratings, and even catch the odd ride or two. And finally, you have the hidden secrets and specials listed throughout this game. They're everywhere! And trust me, if you want to complete this game, you'll want to look for them. But they are so deviously hidden that if the internet and YouTube weren't a thing, many completionists would be screwed over. Naughty Dog clearly wanted to create a game that took every increment of clever and brains to completely complete, and they certainly succeeded to a certain degree. But as you can probably guess, there are things about this game that don't bide well with me. At all! These may seem nitpicky, but they really stack up for me. First of all, the bosses in this game SUCK! With the exception of the engine boss battle, almost every boss in this game can be considered bad to a degree. And DON'T EVEN GET ME STARTED ON THAT FINAL BOSS! THAT IS THE WORST FINAL BOSS I HAVE EVER FACED! AND YES, I HAVE PUT OUT WITH JASPER BAT JR! Secondly, I really find this game super linear. If you know how to play this game to complete, you can play through all the game's levels in sequence and still complete the game. Naughty Dog might as well have stuck with the linear setup of the original game then. And finally, and I am sorry, but this game grows stale fast. The first two warp rooms are alright, but then the third and fourth warp rooms are just boring. The end game and the final warp room is the most enjoyable part of the whole game, with the best boss of the game coming right before it and then being followed by four of my favourite levels in the game. Both of the factory levels, Piston It Away and Space Out, and both jetpack levels, Rocket and Pack Attack, which all of a sudden drops like a sack of anvils courtesy of that final boss! If I had to sum this game up in one word, it'd be roller coaster. It has its peaks, but it also has its troughs. And the drops are immense! But despite all that negativity, I still enjoy this game and play for it every now and then. You can't completely hate a game that has a soundtrack this brilliant, the amazing level design only Noido can deliver, and I dare you to hate those jetpack levels. However, the custom reset and nitpicky negatives I have bogged the whole thing down for me. It's not a bad game by any measure, it's just not to my complete liking. Also, I swear I'm the only person that doesn't like the polar levels. Need I mention that Quarter Strikes Back also has possibly my least favourite level in the entire series? How I HATE RUIN NATION! I'll be honest, party games aren't my thing. Sure they are fun, but the concept behind them is being able to play them with friends. Something that I quite simply cannot do. Few party games can actually entertain me by my lonesome. But one in particular is Crash Bash. There are a lot of things about Crash Bash to like, but there is one big overhanging problem. For many, this game is nothing short of a total nightmare. This game is often feared by many as one of the hardest games to play and complete 200%. And that is not a joke either. That is literally how hard this game is. Horror stories exist of how brutal this game can be. But you know something? That's what keeps me coming back. For as difficult this game may be, it is one thing. Fun. Lots and lots of fun. 
I keep coming back to enjoy this game and crave that difficulty, even going so far as to endure the horror of this game's difficulty to simply complete it 200%. All in all, there are 28 minigames, broken into 7 game types that each have their own set of rules and playstyles, and each variant having its own gimmick or spin on the standard play to make things interesting and keep you entertained. From basic stuff like Crash Ball and Mallet Mash, to crazy complicated stuff like Dot Dash and Pogo Padlock, to unique and special games like Pogo Gogo Go and Swamp Fox. This game has just about everything! But not only is the level of variety, complexity and diversity generous, it is also expanded upon by the in-game collectibles. Trophies are standard first of three wins battles, gems have much stricter victory conditions such as less time or a handicap, relics involve beating a super tough AI repeatedly, and then you have the infamous crystals. Crystal challenges are special events in which a new gimmick is added to the play to make things harder. Maybe an ability has been omitted for you and only you. Maybe your opponents have a special ability. Maybe you suffer a severe hindrance to work around. Maybe you need to avoid something at all costs. Whatever it is, the Crystal Challenges never fail to leave an impression. Either from being really fun or really damn annoying. But whatever you say about this game, one thing it is definitely is huge amounts of fun. Even on your own. Or if you really want to test your friendship with someone, try playing the game story mode together. I dare you. There are things about this game that I don't like, however. For one, the bosses are pretty... Eh. I know people make a fuss over the Berminator, but really, I don't like it that much. Worst of all is how staggered the game's difficulty is. One minute you're having a blast and having fun with something easy, next second you're on the brink of alcoholism because of the sheer difficulty. Whatever you do, everyone, don't ask people about Skyballs, Swamp Fox, or Melt Panic. They'll commit mass genocide out of sheer rage! That was done on a close track with a professional driver, not... Oh ho ho yeah! I love Crash Tag Team Racing! This is in my opinion one of the best Crash Bandicoot games developed by Radical Entertainment. Certainly better than Crash of the Titans. Tag Team Racing is one of my favourites simply for how much stupid fun this game is. We hear about games being dumb fun and that's the only reason you would play them, and this is by far one of the best choices. Yes, it does have merits as a standalone game, but who cares? This game is ridiculous amounts of fun! The main merit of CTTR is that it is one of the funniest video games I have played in years! This game is bound to make you crack a smile at any chance imaginable! Particularly in the racing segments of the game, where the characters are over the top levels of funny! I often just play for the races simply to get a good laugh out of all the stupid schlock that comes rolling out of their mouths! Especially for what I like to call this game's version of the Three Stooges! Dr. Engine, Dr. Cortex, and Ebenezer Von Clutch! You better be wearing something tight! Because your size might split from this! Hey, I dropped my muffin! Oh, that was painful. Now, I cry. Summon my proctologist! Come back, so I can destroy you again! I wonder why it is impossible for me to open that gently. Oh well! You see? I knew that extra quart of oil would work! Uh... I'll ruin you! Like I ruined my prom dress! I mean tux! Mine auto controls is haywire! Medic! How did I ever get stuck with this heap? But well, let's leave the comedy aside and look at everything else in the game. Admittedly, the racing is pretty easy, but I get fun out of it from the comedy and also from not clashing with my opponents. Yes, it's fun using those big weapons, but I just find it more enjoyable when hooning around normally. The tracks are all very fun, creative and well designed, with the appearance that each track is clearly unfinished playing to its strengths. Primarily because the entire park is still under construction, even though it is apparently open. Speaking of which, the open world motor park is actually really fun to explore on foot, if only not as enjoyable as doing the racing. There's plenty to find in the game, including all the diorama cutscenes and lots and lots of power crystals, plus a nice collection of outfits for all the characters. But for as well designed this game is, like I said, I love this game for how stupidly fun it is. It's not the single most reason, but it is the lead priority why. I don't play this for the game, I play it for the last. Although I do enjoy racing the tracks every now and then and getting all the possible dialogue outcomes. Also, there's just something about repeatedly hitting someone over and over with a spin attack. Aww, isn't that a shame? We've run out of time before the top three games could be revealed. I'm sorry everyone, but you'll have to wait. But don't expect me to be long, because on September 9, the next part of this video will be uploaded. I promise you all that. 
So if you want to see my top 3 Crash Bandicoot games, just wait until then. Be patient, and I will see you all then.